Today on Rescue Vet, a French bulldog diagnosed with a brain tumor is admitted to the emergency room after a series of seizures. Is the tumor treatable with chemotherapy or will the owner be faced with euthanizing her companion? My concern is that it's starting to come back now and, and that we're starting to lose the battle. A cat with a foot infection is taken to Bees Ferry, but after further examination, will it result in an amputation? The infection can get into the bloodstream and create sepsis, and animals can die. Dr. Natalie Wendling, a local veterinarian, has taken her four-year-old French bulldog, Butters, to the emergency room at veterinary specialty care after being diagnosed with a brain tumor called glioma several months ago. Butters has been battling a series of seizures. Recently, they have become uncontrollable. Butters is a patient I've been working with now for a few months and uh, presented to me initially for for seizures and some weakness. Uh, we did an MRI. Even though he's such a young dog, he's only four years of age, it did look like there was a tumor in his brain. So we sent him down to the University of Georgia Veterinary School uh, where they were doing a, a special um, trial, a drug study, and they did surgery to remove as much of the tumor as possible and then inserted tubes to directly inject chemotherapy into the tumor. And what we've been doing over the last few months is follow up serial MRIs to see how the tumor is progressing and, and how it responded to the chemotherapy. The foundation that's funding all of this is called Lou Radley Foundation. And um, Ken Johnson is the founder of it and his dog actually had a brain tumor. And so he's um, very adamant about wanting to find a cure for this. And um, not only is this helping um, dogs, but they want to try the same drug that they use on butters in humans. With the support of the Boo Radley Foundation, the University of Georgia, and Emory University, Butter's initial prognosis of one to two months has extended to three months. Initially, after the surgery he had down at University of Georgia, things were going very well. He was, his seizures were well controlled. He was returning back to his, his old self. But recently, over the last week or two, he's been having more and more seizures and becoming um, less uh, personable. Our concern is that although previous MRIs had shown very good tumor control with the chemotherapy, um, my concern is that it's starting to come back now and, and that we're starting to lose the battle. Right now he's been sedated as a before his anesthesia and we we're going to be doing an MRI, a follow-up MRI today to see if there's any tumor regrowth uh, to explain the seizures that he's having again or if it's just a continuation of his uh, prior seizure disorder associated with the tumor that was removed. So we'll know a lot more later today. Chris Hackett has brought his four-year-old cat, Joey, to Bees Ferry Veterinary Hospital for a foot infection caused by a deeply ingrown nail. Joey was declawed as a kitten. However, years later, one of his nails has grown back, creating pain around his paw. My wife noticed that he's been bothering, and we took a look at it and noticed that he was in a lot of pain when we touched it, so we decided we better bring him into the vet here real quick. When you do a declaw, you're removing the first digit of every finger. They have the digits in each bone, just like we have. So you're creating an amputation right here. And sometimes some bone can get left behind, and that signals the body to regrow. And as a result of the nail coming through the skin, it creates an infection and an inflammatory process around there, and it's quite painful. But obviously, the first procedure, they didn't get it, and it's been growing back over the years. 
the infection can grow and grow and grow and it can get into the bone. And if we get infection in the bone, that can be very serious. So we may have to amputate higher up if, if the bone is infected. Um, the infection can get into the bloodstream and create sepsis and animals can die. So what we're gonna to do today is cut the nail and get that out of the paw pad. So get rid of the offending agent. Um, so th this can't feel very good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this nail in half and, and get that out of there. Probably be a nice relief for him. So one, two, hello. Okay, it's always that initial click that I always get. Ooh. I know it. Okay, let's see. Hang on, see. let me regrip them. Here's one part. Oh. So it's really grown in there. It's all right, Joey. I know, oh, Joey. Oh, little Joey. It's okay, my friend. Hold on. All right, let's see what we can do about this. Dr. Mayers is trying to safely remove Joey's ingrown nail, but without the use of anesthesia to control the pain, she is limited to what she can remove. Oh, I know, my friend. Seeing any animal struggle really hurts you, and, and I think that's why I stopped abruptly once I saw him struggling, because we're in this profession to heal and to prevent pain, and once I notice that we're in pain, I, you know, that obviously doesn't sit well in your belly as a veterinarian. So luckily, we can give a lot of things, but to investigate that deeper, anesthesia is gonna be warranted. I think this is the best we're gonna be able to go. I'm gonna shave all the hair around here and really scrub this up, but I think that's the shortest, but you can see all this skin has ruptured. It's a real mess. He's shaking because he's really nervous. He's got pain medicine on board already. get all this hair away from here. Oh, it's sensitive. And you can see his paws pretty swollen, too. We're just getting the hair away so we can have a, a cleaner working surface. Oh, I know, my friend. Hey, let's see how that looks, my friend. Let's see. Wow. So, let's scrub that up. You can see how swollen the, it is from here to here. We're gonna have to go in there surgically and clean this bone out anyway. Joey's nail is so deeply ingrown that surgery will be necessary to fully remove the nail. To get him through the next few weeks before his surgery, Joey will be put on antibiotics, anti-inflammatories, and pain medication. He ate this morning, so you really want to prevent general anesthesia when they ate, but this isn't a surgical emergency. So to stop everything that I'm doing to go right into surgery to heal this foot, that can be scheduled during a surgical day when we're prepared for this. Back at Veterinary Specialty Care, Dr. Brofman is performing an MRI on Butters. After days of intractable seizures, it's possible Butters' tumor has come back, and it may be larger than before. So you can see this right here. That, that wasn't present. That's where the tumor was originally, and that was not present um, at the, on the scan in December. Yeah. And so, it's extending a little bit further back. When Natalie came in uh, to look at Butter's MRI, I was showing her uh, how the tumor had recurred, comparing the pre previous MRIs postoperatively to the MRI today, and there's obvious recurrence, unfortunately, and it, it even looks more invasive and, and more involved than, than prior to surgery. It's, it's definitely back worse than before. This just wasn't wasn't here before last time. So 
All right, I'm sorry. I know that um, looking at that MRI, he doesn't have long. And, and I kind of knew that before. Um, I thought I'd have longer than, you know, four months. But um, without a lot of this, I wouldn't have had that long. So, um, and we've gotten some good, good family time with him. <laughs> Surgical technician Lori Brothenek monitors Butters while he comes out of anesthesia. Because Butters is prone to seizures, it is essential a watchful eye is kept on him. We're just waking him up. He's on oxygen right now. Um, I'm monitoring his heart rate and his SpO2 level. And I'm just going to wait for him to wake up. The brain tumor has gotten bigger, which is not very good news. So we'll see what the owner wants to do. She may be putting up a cell. Anesthesia can be risky, even for healthy dogs. So Lori will stay with Butters until he wakes up, while monitoring his heart rate, blood pressure, and breathing. What happened? Is he breathing? Butters had a post-anesthetic complication in, in our recovery unit where he uh, stopped breathing and his heart stopped. And my suspicion is that it probably occurred secondary to a lot of pressure on his brain from the tumor that can uh, cause compression and affect the parts of the brain that are responsible for controlling your heart rate and, and your breathing. Lori, the technician who was recovering him, noticed that the breathing had, had changed. And unfortunately, uh, she noticed that immediately and was able to you know, sound the alarm. He had a good eye, like a good eye reflex. And um, when I went to go touch it again, it was, he didn't have anything and he just stopped breathing. I mean, it literally happened in a second. Finally, a heartbeat is detected, but Butters isn't out of the woods just yet. So right now what we're doing is um, trying to give medications to decrease the uh, pressure that's, that may be built up in, in his brain from all the swelling. And um, I mean, he's already, he's got a good blink reflex and he's doing okay right now. It's possible that this is seizure activity, but I think it's, it's almost more like it's shivering. Have, we have a, he feels warm. Do we have a temperature on him recently? Yeah, I just got it. It was like 95. Okay. So he's kind of getting sensation back. And yeah, I mean, he's got, he's got a good blink reflex. Um, just means he's responding somewhat. So yeah, he's just shivering from a low body temperature. Good job, Lori. Good being on top of that. After everyone's nerves have calmed, Dr. Brothman administers a drug called Manitol to decrease the swelling in Butter's brain. This is uh, certainly not something that's good and um, it makes me concerned. You know, his heart sure. started to go up. His heart rate started to go yeah, up. Yeah, so right I thought it. maybe he okay. was, you know, close to getting, you know, awake. The other possibility is that he may have had a seizure. And, um, and sometimes they can stop breathing during the seizure. The heart rate can go up. It can even go down. At times, it usually goes up. So now he's, he's starting to breathe on his own now. So that's, that's a good sign. You can see the... Bag cool. Thank you, Liz. So this is just measuring uh, his oxygen levels in his blood. So pulse ox, uh, this is the percent that his oxygen is uh, saturating his blood. So 100%, obviously you can't get more than that, so that's good. Uh, and then the 120 is his heart rate. Butters is now stable, but he is still at high risk for seizing again. of anesthesia, Joey will not be having surgery today. To help fight the infection and diminish his pain, 
Veterinary technicians administer a series of shots to get him through the next three weeks before his surgery. We got an anti-inflammatory drug on and an opiate for pain. And plus we needed to give antibiotics and get the secondary bacterial infection eradicated before we go in there. So we needed some time before. If the infection spreads, Joey may have to come back sooner and it could mean his toe will need to be amputated. But hopefully the antibiotics will help cure the infection. Three weeks have passed since Joey's initial procedure at Bees Ferry. Today, he is scheduled to have surgery to fully remove the ingrown nail in his paw. We gave an estimate to the owner of what surgical removal would cost, and he went to the previous veterinarian who did the surgery, and that veterinarian offered to do it for free to correct what he did wrong. I'm really glad that he sought attention for this. Obviously, this was a painful process, and you know, no matter where he goes, you know, obviously I would love for him to come to me, but as long as he's getting attention, that's all I really care about. So I'm glad he's doing better and I look forward to seeing him soon. After a near-death experience, Butters is slowly waking up from anesthesia and is beginning to breathe on his own again. So his temp's, his temp's um, getting back into normal, and so that's good because his brain is like, oh, you know, it, it obviously regulates all that, so it's coming up. So maybe he's gonna, maybe he's gonna wake up for us. You want to leave him here another 24 hours? You want to take him home and see how he does? You can always, obviously, you can always bring him back if you need to. Yeah. Um, can we come back this afternoon and get him? Okay. Yeah. We'll see how he is when, when you're yeah, off work. Yeah, if he's going to start seizing again, yeah. that's just going to make me cry. Yeah. <laughs> no, I won't be able to. Yeah. Hey. But yeah, I mean, that's what are you doing? the brightest I've seen him look uh, in the last uh, few days. So, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I mean, relative, you know. Yeah. I mean, considering what his MRI yeah, looks I, like. It, maybe it's the mannitol and, and everything that we just gave him. It just kind of helped Six. reduce some of that edema, and so it's brightening him up. After the uh, anesthetic crisis that, that he went through, we gave him some medication to help decrease the swelling on his brain. And uh, as he recovered from that, he was actually starting to look a lot brighter and um, a lot brighter than I really have seen him in the last couple of weeks. So I'm um, optimistic that we might get some more time with him and uh, might help us get the seizures under better control and, and get him home. We'll keep him overnight and hopefully get him home tomorrow. <gasps> what do you think? Huh? So he's, um, he's more alert. Um, his temperature's getting back to normal. We're unhooking him from all the monitors and uh, we're just going to wait and see if he continues to become more alert. So, I mean, there's always a potential that, that he doesn't because he's been through so much. Although Butters is showing signs of improvement, his seizures could reoccur at any moment. Because of the swelling in his brain, it is uncertain how much time he has left. He seems a little more out of it. Yeah, he is. Unless he's just tired. Being on the other end of it um, has made me a better veterinarian. I know now what my, um, my clients go through and um, it is tough. And not that I was, you know, cold-hearted before. Um, I just didn't know to the extent uh, I was supposed to have more time with him, and so I get it now. And um, so it's been a, I've realized a lot, him going through this with him. So um, there's been some good to come out of it. <laughs> so yeah, I would say let's, um... We'll keep him here for the afternoon. Okay. We can go back to work. Okay. Just whenever you get off work, just come on down. All right. All right. Well, thank you. We'll right. see what happens. Yeah. We're going to leave him here until the end of the day. And then um, if he's not had any more seizures, then I'm going to take him home tonight and see how he does overnight. Dr. Wendling knows her time may be short with Butters. 
but she is grateful for the time that she has been given with the help of the Boo Radley Foundation and Dr. Brofman. It's been an amazing journey with, with Boo Radley um, because honestly, financially, I wouldn't be able to do all this for him. And he wouldn't be here today as, as, uh, <laughs> as grim as this looks today. He wouldn't have made it this long without um, people like Dr. Brockman and um, Dr. Platt and Georgia and, and Boo Radley. And hopefully Butters is going to um, help them figure out something to help save some people one day, you know? Um, that's the goal. Hi. He's a good boy. Mm. He's a sweet boy. <laughs> Ready? Come on, let's go find your room. Maybe they'll give you a room service this time, huh? When you're a little more awake. Right now, I'm, I think that his biggest challenge is, is overcoming these intractable seizures. And if we can't get the seizures under control, his quality of life is not going to be adequate, and, and she may have to make a tough decision. Last night, uh, Natalie took Butters home, and she uh, did call me a few times at home uh, about his condition and saying that he was having a number of seizures. And so she elected to bring him back in and, and keep him here overnight to be treated by the emergency clinic and try to get the seizures under control. This morning, she uh, elected to, to have Butters put to sleep. It's always upsetting for for us as veterinarians and also for the owners to have to make that decision. If they're not enjoying running, sleeping, eating, being loved, then sometimes I really think it can be the, the biggest act of love they can, they can choose for their pets.